it's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. We got the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info man. You can call him information. Info man. Kicking knowledge all over this nation. Win, lose, or draw. You can bring your hate team. But if you want to win, please don't bring your debate team. We talking Japanese shogun. Aztecs, old mix, and African dogun. Everybody, this is Information Man. Welcome, welcome to the program. Make sure if you like what I'm doing over here, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notification. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Brazil as it relates to black people and how it connects us here in America where we live. Most important thing to know is that 54% of the people who live in Brazil are of African descent, okay? Brazil is the last country in the world to abolish and to end slavery as we know it in the Western world in 1888, okay? Another thing we need to understand about Brazil, and I'm not talking about Rio, as everybody gets all caught up into Rio, and most people get caught up, well, let me say some people get caught up into the fantasies of sex, uh, you know, sex vacation. Let me go to Brazil and get my freak on, get my swerve on, as they call it. Let me just get a little bit deeper into this country because the Brazilian people are my people, okay? And we're interconnected. Now, although in America, we as American descendants of slaves have to fight and demand and make aware of what is due to us. But globally around the world, as I have said on other previous videos, other groups of people around the world in the black diaspora are all fighting for freedom, justice, and equality. And, and for the most part, most part, excuse me, are also demanding reparations that is due to them. The Brazilian people, black people in Brazil are a proud people. But the thing about Brazil that's interesting is that you can see it on the people's faces. You can see the legacy and the history of slavery right on their faces. Because I'm going to talk about El Salvador, Brazil, a place that most people, especially here, black people in America, need to have an understanding and connection to. And I'll tell you why. Because most black people who were those that were in slavery, because I know we have people that are ever that are aborigine, you know, there were black people that were originally here, you know, from the very get go. And the truth of the matter is black people are global people. We are universal people. We're all over the world. OK, there's history and there's um, documentation of our presence in Asia, Japan. Some of the first samurai were black. So black people been all over the world. Uh, the Philippines, our footprint is around the world because we are the original people. So therefore, being the original people, most people in the world that have some dark pigmentation, it is because of the presence of the black man, okay? The black woman, our presence in the world has been so strong. Now with a Salvador, Brazil as part of this, and like I said, 54% of people in uh, Brazil are of African ancestry. The majority of the population of Brazil, Brazil is a black country, okay? And a lot of times when you look at their news, you look at the uh, 
the, the, you know, the carnival that they have every year, the festivals, you tend to see the lighter fare or what we call the white Brazilians because there's so many different uh, mixtures of people in Brazil. But you tend to see them front and center. You see it in their soap operas. You see it in their movies. You see it in the news. It's, uh, they make it look as if it's a Europeans are the face of or fair skin or, or your Latin Brazilians. And you also have a Japanese contingents. You have a large population of Japanese. You have the gauchos, or which, which are basically the, your Mexican Brazilians that have migrated there. Of course, you've got Europeans. Europeans, you can't get away from them. They're always uh, coming into other people's countries. And we know that um, like many of us, Portuguese, uh, the Brazilian Portuguese or the language was forced on them uh, during their during the slave experience, the Trans American or Trans uh, Slave experience, uh, Transatlantic uh, Slave Trade, Transatlantic Slave Trade. Let me get that right. And uh, just like us in America, we speak English because English is a language that was forced upon us as well. So, and the Latinos who speak Spanish. And Spanish is not a race. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a language, okay? It's a concept. All these uh, racial categories are all concepts. And I know in Brazil, they have many categories of race. Now you've got, and I've seen videos on this. You've got uh, people in Brazil who would be considered Mexicans here in America, or Latino, or something of that nature, who identify themselves as black. In Brazil, they see themselves as black because they have a black parent, they have a black mother, black grandparents, black heritage, African heritage of some sort or another. OK, but a Salvador, Brazil, to get back on point here is a very special place because this is the gateway in which most uh, African, some of our ancestors, slaves who were brought over from the continent, they came through the gate gateway of El Salvador, Brazil. And through El Salvador, Brazil, many of our ancestors and black people uh, were dispersed throughout most of South America. And if I'm not mistaken, around 4% or so of, uh, of us here in America as black people, only a small percentage, around 4% of African slaves were brought to what we call the new world we call America today. And those three colonies during the 13, those 13 colonies, and during the 1600s into the uh, late 1800s of, of shackle slavery for black people in America, you had Virginia being one of the first colonies which they brought slave black, our ancestors to. You have uh, North Carolina, South Carolina throughout the, the South is some of the areas where black people were dropped off at. But we tend to forget the most important place is El Salvador, Brazil. If you ever have visit there, they have the old cobblestone, they have the old uh, 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 architecture and buildings that were there from day one when black people spilled blood and were brought over to this, what they what we would call a foreign land, okay? Um, El Salvador, Brazil, believe it or not, you may not believe me, is the most African country, most African-centric uh, country our most African presence outside of the continent. Meaning, when you go to El Salvador, Brazil, the history, the African customs and culture, it is embedded into El Salvador, Brazil. And if I'm not mistaken, El Salvador, Brazil is the most, I think has the largest uh, black population amongst many of the cities and states in uh, Brazil. And unfortunately, like what we deal with here at home, they have police brutality. You have high homicide rates, uh, black people being mistreated. Uh, there, there is violence. There, the, and, and the reality is, is that whenever you have low education, you have low opportunity, you're being oppressed, you are going to have high levels of violence. You are going to have uh, unemployment. You're going to have despair. And this is a place in Brazil that does have that despair. But despite the despair, there is there are also positives. OK, so I need you to understand. And this is very important because this is a historical place. Um, the history is there. And let's go into uh, Calavera when uh, the dancing of, of the Brazilian. 
Uh, remember, the slaves, when they were brought over, they were brought over in chains to their arms and chains to their feet, okay? And they had to learn how to fight being chained by the ankles and chained by the hand, by the arm areas. And they had to learn how to fight against their captures. And we know, let's do, let's do a little history here. The Portuguese were one of the first people that were involved in the slave trade. And you had the Arabs. Let's not forget the Arabs. I'm sorry to those of you who are practicing Muslims, but the fact of the matter is the Arabs were involved in the slave trade in the Portuguese, as I said before. And you did have some African tribes in the continent that were implicit in involvement. The Spanish, of course, I can't forget the Europeans. Okay. And you've got knuckleheads like Kanye West saying that black people made it a choice to be in slavery, which is the most ridiculous thing because there are accounts that even before black people from out of the continent were put on those ships, a lot of them put up a hell of a fight to not be brought upon the ship and gave up their lives. There are also accounts of them putting these special nets around the ships because you would have oh, some, of the, some, of, some of our ancestors that would jump off the ship and they would rather give them their lives to the sharks in the sea than be a slave. Okay, these things happen. You had slave revolts on the ships. You had slave revolts in plantations led by great men like Ned Turner. Let's not forget about him. And so even in Brazil, you've had resistance from black people there. Now, another thing in Brazil that's an unfortunate situation, like I said for earlier, is that when you look at Brazil, the face of Brazil, you would think it's a European face or a lighter skinned face. But uh, the true face and ethnic makeup of Brazil is black people who look just like me. If I was to go to Brazil right now, I'll blend in. I've got some family origins there. So I'll blend in very easily. Most of you would blend in very easily. Um, and we have to understand that like a lot of us in America who don't tend to want to talk about slavery, some of us who don't want to talk about slavery, we feel some shame about it. And as it relates to the ADOS, there's some that are saying oh, we should stop talking about it. We're not, uh, we're not descendants of slaves. Um, a lot of times we don't want to talk about that, which is painful in our history. And in Brazil, you do have black people in Brazil that will deny being black because in Brazil, they have a saying that when you identify as black, you are basically having one foot, one foot in the slave quarters again, or the slave house. They call it the slave house. So you will have uh, great soccer players in Brazil like a Pele or uh, Neymar. And you can clearly tell that Neymar has African ancestry in his bloodstream. Or obviously a Pele. And a lot of times they don't want to identify themselves as black because they don't want to identify themselves with something in Brazil that's seen as negative. And that's due to cultural conditioning. Cultural conditioning which causes us to marginalize, underestimate, and undervalue ourselves. So what I want to do here with this history I'm giving you is that keep in mind that there is a lineage that we have to El Salvador, Brazil, because some of our ancestors who made their way to America came through El Salvador, Brazil, that gateway, and came, and from there, where some of us were dispersed and moved into what we call North America or America, America as we know it today. And then so some of our ancestors were left in El Salvador, Brazil, and then dispersed out in other parts of Brazil. And another history about uh, El Salvador, Brazil is that El Salvador, Brazil was the original capital city of Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I'm going to show you some footage here. There's some beautiful coastlines. I would say go there and vacation, uh, engage, engage with the people. Now, I wouldn't do the tourist thing. I would want to... A, a couple. I would want to engage with the people, eat what the people eat. Now, one of the most, the national staple food in Brazil, believe it or not, is beans and rice. How many of us black folks here in America eat a lot of beans and rice? I think people in Latin culture eat a lot of beans and rice. So a lot of us, uh, their diet is similar to our diet as well. Their food, the music, the drumming. Now the drumming clips, I'm going to show you several drumming clips in this video. The drumming is powerful because the drums are the heartbeat of a nation. They are the heartbeat of our culture. They are the messaging and the way people were able to send messages and communicate with other tribes and other people. So the drums are a spiritual, musical uh, uh, um, uh, endeavor. 
it gets into the core and brings us out of the third dimension to the fourth dimension to the fifth dimension, astral projecting our spirit. When you hear those drums, whenever I hear drums, it really uh, gets me going. Now, where I work at, I work in the prison system, I'm a rehab therapist. I actually use drumming with the music therapist. I, I'm involved with the music therapist and the art therapist. I do drumming with the guys where I work at. And I bring a bunch of, I bring guys out and I set the drums up, the musical instruments, and I get into it with them. And it does have a therapeutic effect on their spirit. I can see it firsthand when I'm working with them. So drumming is powerful. You're going to see that near the end of this video. You're going to see that it's very distinct. So let's be, uh, let's understand that even though we are in America, we have black people in the Caribbean, black people in the UK, black people in South America, the majority of black people in the world are not in America. See, as, as black people in America, we, we sometimes think that we are the be all, the end all. But the majority of black people that were moved out of the continent are in South America, which is why you have black people in Costa Rica, uh, Colombia. You've got black people in Cuba, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, which is, you know, and then you have black people throughout South America. And let's not mistake, let's not forget, because Professor Gates did a video on this, you also have black people that were moved into what we call Mexico today, okay? And give you a little bit of history, uh, at least one or two of Mexico's generals that were responsible for Mexico's independence were black men, black Mexicans. Yes, they're in their libraries, it's in their history. So Mexico um, has its independence leading up to today because one and two, I think, but I believe two of their generals were of African ancestry, okay? You have your darker skinned Mexicans. They have African blood in them because we are all over the world. We are all over the diaspora. Even though many people may not like us, may not have many friends, black people in America, many of them are running our blood in their bloodstreams because our ancestors dropped their blood, their blood in them because you had people that intermix, you had people that, that, you know, had sexual uh, intercourse with each other, people who fell in love with each other, things of that nature. So these things are very real. So I would say take a trip to get out of America, get your passport, see the world, go to El Salvador, Brazil. Everyone goes to Rio, but El Salvador, Brazil uh, has a strong history that's grounded and there's a lot of connection between El Salvador, Brazil, and Africa itself. And there is that connection to us as black people in America because some of our ancestors came through that gateway um, before just being dispersed. And maybe some of our ancestors that we have never met are still living in Brazil today and other parts of the world, okay? Which is why black people are global, not only because of slavery, but because we had black men and women who traveled, uh, you know, trading with other groups, traveled from one place to another. They have even found um, Egyptian pottery in what we call North America. And there has been, you know, they were exchanging between different cultures uh, before Europeans even knew that the world was not flat, before Europeans knew how to season their food and understood uh, science. Um, we are the ones that created science, which is why black people should be in, be really studying science because science is something that our ancestors came up with, created, and manifest. And we must maintain that manifestation. So I hope you enjoy uh, the video clips that I have here. There's a sister who traveled to Brazil, who's from Baltimore, where I was born. And she talks about the similarities of El Salvador, Brazil. Let me get a drink here. El Salvador, Brazil, and Baltimore, Maryland. Ah, refreshing. So this is very, uh, very important for us to recognize uh, these sort of things is that there are similarities between people or, or that are black in other countries compared to us. There's some similarities in the way they're living and some of their struggles. OK. And although we we black, we in, uh, in America are pushing the ADOS, some of us, um, it does not mean that we do not uh, feel consolidated. We for our brothers and sisters that are abroad. So this sister, the clip I'm gonna show you, uh, sister had a beautiful experience there. I think she's living there. She's um, she's a filmmaker. 
Uh, she does talk about the good and the bad. Okay, it does have there, there are some rough patches pa patches about El Salvador, Brazil, but then there are some positives. And then on the other clips, like I said, I'm going to give you clips, pepper you with drumming, young people drumming, get into the spirit of the music, as I said before. And near the end, uh, there's another special clip that I'm going to um, add on to this video. So I hope that you all enjoy uh, this. My goal is to continue opening up one's mind, providing information, and I hope you enjoy the clip, and I hope you enjoy what I <laughs> had to say here. Tell the truth. I'm gonna always tell the truth. Thank you. Brazil, a country with a lot of story to tell. Salvador, Bahia, the first capital of Brazil, the place where the unmistakable sound of the drumming echoes all over the world. Regarding the architecture, the city has Renaissance buildings and monuments with exceptional quality. Houses with vivid colors, a feature from Old City. The Cathedral Basilica is considered the most beautiful from the Portuguese Baroque examples around the world. The San Francisco Third Order Church is the only church in Brazil with a facade made from carved stone, referring to the Spanish Baroque. The Fort of San Marcelo is situated near the historic center of Salvador, and it's known for being into the waters of Todos os Santos Bay. Nossa Senhora dos Rosários dos Pretos Church was built by slaves and free black people. Its towers have been influenced by Indian, and the facade has the Rococo and Baroque style. The fortress of Santo Antonio da Barra was the first fort built in Brazil. At the same place is the first lighthouse of Americas. In addition to the numerous architectonic masterpieces, Salvador offers other amazing attractions. Try to see a capoeira play, a mix of fight, dance and sport, typically Brazilian with its origins in Bahia. Salvador also has a large seashore formed by very beautiful beaches. You must have seen a little of Salvador around on someone's wrist who visited Nosso Senhor do Bonfim Church. More than luck, the bracelets bring the joy of a people who love to enjoy the life. Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. Visit this heritage recognized by UNESCO. You're going to be enchanted. My name is Nia Hampton. I'm 23 years old. I'm from West Baltimore, Maryland. Being black in America means having to live in a world that was designed to make you believe your life has no value. I never believed that. I was taught the truth. To be in Bahia, to be in Salvador is to be connected to Africa in some way, whether it's the food you eat, the cottage, the music you play, the sounds of samba. Um, those things come directly from your culture, from West Africa. I'm really able to be myself in Salvador. The level of freedom I have here is huge. I've developed an ease in my skin just living here. Here everyone looks like me. We're the majority. In Salvador, when I look out into a sea of people and see black faces in different shades, I feel a sense of amazement because we weren't supposed to survive, basically. People who are descended of people who were, were slaves, every country treated us differently in regards to how they wanted to get rid of us. In Brazil specifically, the plan was if we import white people and let them procreate, eventually the black will disappear. But it didn't. The white disappeared and now you have Brazil as we know it. So that for me is just really wild. The connection between Salvador and Baltimore is very strong. Salvador is a city full of black folk, poor folk, neglected by the government and gentrification is happening very fast here. Just like what happened in Baltimore and Ferguson, there's a war on black people. 
It's always been there. Here in Brazil, Afro-Brazilians are living in a terrifying situation with police brutality. I've been inspiring filmmaker and journalist and I have been comparing the struggle of the black Brazilian and the black person from the states. Right now we are in Kabula. It is the site where 13 young black men were massacred during, during carnival. The police lined them up against the wall and shot them. Negros just started to say this big key. He pensou que aqui é um peregrino negro, né? Mas isso é verdade ou não? Só se for para os afros americanos, é para nós negros aqui. A gente vive marginalizado. Na verdade, Salvador é um lugar de injustiça. Os brancos mantêm, estão em todas as instituições de poder. Eles que mandam, eles que organizam tudo, eles que ganham dinheiro, ele que institui a violência contra a gente, né? Sim. Você, você tem uma cidade que você não tem, nunca teve 80% de negro, você nunca teve um prefeito negro, você nunca. Nobody talks about the police. You don't deal with the police because everyone is afraid of the police. The police can kill you. The police will come to the marches and take pictures of the people. I'm like we're coming for you. And police have military type guns and they come through in tanks. This kind of violence is so common in Salvador that it's normal. Even though black people are a majority, they face abuse from police. The crazy thing is many police officers are black themselves, but it doesn't matter. They will still kill you for no reason. I came to Brazil the month Michael Brown was killed. I grew up right next to where the riots were occurring in Baltimore. Most people here were for the people in Baltimore. There was a lot of congratulations Baltimore, we're with you, we feel you, we know exactly what's going on. That was great and the fact that Michael Brown and Freddie Gray are on the wall here. It's so surreal because I wasn't there for the riots but I get to be here and see Bayano people honor the black struggle in the states. been living in one of the most dangerous cities in the world with one of the most violent police forces where there's a war against black people as well and yet the people still live. Even in their misery and suffering they still somber, they smile at each other and they're affectionate. They haven't lost sight of their own humanity. It's a form of survival, it's a form of resistance. Mulheres da África do Sul, estamos aqui em Salvador, Bahia, onde tem se intensificado né, nos últimos anos o debate acerca da estética, do empoderamento através da estética. Então hoje a gente está vivendo um momento que muitas mulheres estão deixando de usar o cabelo alisado e está passando pela transição capilar para assumir o seu cabelo crespo, cacheado, seja ele qual for. Então, em Salvador, a gente está vivendo intensamente isso, no interior do estado também. E a gente está aqui com, né, somos quatro mulheres baianas, todas que passaram por transição capilar. E cada uma vai contar um pouquinho de sua experiência sobre isso, para que vocês possam conhecer e se inspirar, quem sabe, a utilizar mais vezes o seu cabelo natural.
It's the info. It's the man with the info. Whatever you want to know, come join the man with the info show. It's the info. It's the info. Whatever you want to know, come